I guess nowadays, it just kind of feels like all our stories are in HD. They're 3D, they're widescreen, we're blowing each other up but making out alive, sky falling from bullets, then landing in jacuzzis, and money and music that we never wrote but we get the royalties to miming along with. You're not even an underdog anymore, unless you turned a sob story into a million pounds in front of screaming crowds when the underdogs that I thought I knew were people like Margaret, Mercutio and Boo. No one's listening to the tales of the little people. Quiet, normal, just getting by, taking measured steps through life. The people who right now are making tea and mugs they bought in Blackpool on the bank holiday weekend last August. And I guess the lights have just become a little too bright for me. I'm dazzled by the directness of it all and how close it seems to be. That touch screen, constant stream of people under my thumb telling me that everything is amazing. No. Because if everything is amazing, then nothing is. But still, you're using that language like, ah, oh, shock, twist, celeb, news, crazy, wild, oh my God, can you believe it? Mad for it, up for it, heart melting, heart breaking, men jumping from the moon, bitter feud, cats laughing on YouTube. But Carver said, at the end of the day, all we have is the words, so they had better be the right ones. So tell me the story of how much it hurts each morning when she finishes her toast and walks out the door and you know you're not going to see her again until four. Or him across the road, whose lights come on at seven when you're picking up your post. He leaves the house at eight when you're trying to oil that persistent squeak on your left brake. What's he doing for those 60 minutes and for the rest of the day? Is it just like he's sat at a desk where he knows he goes unnoticed? His job has so little impact on the company, they only keep him because he cleans the stationery cupboard out twice a month. And the one time he speaks is at the Christmas office party after he sips a couple shandies. Or maybe it's more interesting than that. Just not as white and black as people would have you believe. Like maybe he's running some backstreet factory making dodgy fireworks and selling them to kids. And yes, his conscience pains him so hard he can't sleep without the tablets. But no one will know how much he misses his daughter's face. And how he measures time and how many pennies closer he is to seeing it again, I don't know. You tell me. Then turn around and find another face on the street to play with or don't even make it up. Tell me about that time that your dad ate four 15-inch pizzas to win a bet, but he lost anyway because he said he could do five and then he had to hand over your mum's Neil Diamond collection and she didn't speak to him for a week. Or how he is the only one who knows why I'm afraid of broken glass and pigeons and why snow in February makes me sad. There's a whole novel in that, with chapters and sequels and acts. So tell me stories that strip back walls and doors and say it's okay not to be a hero out there because in here you are king and you can rewrite whatever you were going to say to him to make him feel small or stupid or loved or worthwhile and your silence will never have happened. So... What is she listening to? Why is he frowning? What stop does she get off at? And why did it change yesterday? What's in that bag? Why are they not speaking? Nobody's noticed he's stepped in any cracks yet. Who does the washing up in their house? Why is her hair parted differently today? Is there anyone waiting at home for them? And what did he ask for in his letter to Santa when he was four? You have stories. I can see them. And you are so much more interesting than any dancing, prancing, pouted face, marching in time to the lights and the voiceover men. You have stories. Tell me them.